Hi everyone. Uh, today we will learn about uh, the texture mapping. So we will learn uh, the basic theory of texture mapping. And then I think in part B we will learn how to program in texture mapping in WebGL. So why we need texture mapping? For example, if we want to draw some building, so we can modeling geometrically the, the detail of each building. For example, if building has uh, some kind of window, we can model it. So we, uh, it means that we will generate the, the vertex, each all vertex of a window or something. So, and then we will assign the color of each vertex and then we can draw this, this thing. But and also we can draw some some load with some vertexes. For example, one, two, three, four vertex is a white color, and and black color. We we can render, we can draw something in some in geometry. We can draw black. Uh, we can describe the, the asphalt. But sometimes it is not possible to. It is not possible to modeling the all windows of this this building, even though we have some kind of a, some blueprint of this building with digital format. Sometimes it is not possible to render on the modern GPU, and of course it is not efficient and effective way to render render the building. So, so. So to to solve this problem and to, to to render the more realistic rendering result, the we we the the new idea is, uh, is appeared. So that is the texture mapping. Okay, texture mapping is very similar to 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 wallpaper in our wall. So. We make image, bitmap image, and then mapping onto geometry. That is, that is quite a realistic, we can get quite a realistic rendering with very low cost, and it is very easy to implement on modern GPU. Okay. So, for example, if you have some kind of a so face geometry model of of human face and then we can make we can get some kind of a the 2d image f by scanning laser scanning or something then we can get some kind of a slitter, cylindrical image of this image and then texture map onto here then we can get realistic the face image of by uh, the texture mapping Okay, so when we are making this this data, so we will use three D laser scanner for get this geometry. Geometry, geometry means that the shape or shape of the model, and then we also can we we, we should also also the gathering the the, the color information of the face so with the so linear linear sensor or something to get color with laser or something other device then you can get this image okay it is very funny example that I, when I so when I visit some place I tested the 3d scanner that is my face okay it is not a movie it is 3d shape it's very weird, but <laughs> yeah, you can see that. So why the outside part is not scanned? It is because the hair is too black, so it is not possible to get the 3D shape or the color cannot get from the scanning device. So the so we lost the black part, and then the uh, geometry and some 2D image is gathered from that 3D scanner. 
then you can text the map onto geometry, then you can get this result. Look at that. This 3D shape. Okay. Okay. I will show you some it is 3D shape. Okay. In PowerPoint, you can add it 3D. Then I can rotate it. You can see that. Yes, it is 3D shape. You can see inside, outside inside outside so, so it is very weird but, but it is very funny okay okay let's go to the next topic and then so to to understand the texture mapping we, we should understand image the, in in texture mapping image means of course that is last image other word that is bitmap image okay so in bitmap so I said that the prime buffer, prime buffer is memory block that store image. So we can think that prime buffer like this. So the, the, the si size width of the image is n, so the height of image is n. Then we can mm -hmm. set the x dimension, y dimension. And then the, there is a, some kind of a k, k's bit. So we can say that so bit depth. Okay, bit plane. So each each one bit one bit the the m by n size plane you can call it is bit plane. Okay. So so pixel is if we set x and y x and y position, then there is a one small element of picture. The the pixel means that the picture element. Okay. The one element has k-bit data, okay? k-bit data. So, the pixel value is the, the collection of bit plane positioned with commonly positioned the, the xy position, okay? Of course, xy position is located in n by m size the, the rectangle. So, normally, last image of bitmap is rectangle say, shape, so so x y position should be inside of m and and then m size of dimension. Okay, so it is very basic idea. And then each each pixel can have some kind of a component. So for example, for example, in monochrome image, monochrome image is like this. So there is some one pixel has, one pixel has kind of a, a the, the luminance value. We can say that's a brightness value, okay? So if we set with the one pixel has eight bit luminance value, then we can say that it is one byte, one byte bit depth of image, then it is a notation of C language, but the image is 500, if size of the, the image is 520 and 520, then you can say that, so we can define like this, GLU unsigned byte, so it means 8-bit, okay? So, and then it is, it has size of 520 and 520. In WebGL and WebGL 1 and Web uh, OpenGL is 2.0. The size, si if size is to the to power of n, then it, it it is much easier to use it. So, for example, the size is 123 by 157. Then it is not easy to use this kind of image. Okay. So, so make make size with two, two the power of two. The x size and y size must be same. In that case, it, it is much more easier to use it. Okay. And another example is color value that is uh, it has uh, some RGB value. Each RGB color component have one byte data. Then we can say that we can define in C language like this: the 520 by 520 and three byte. Okay, 
If there is some kind of another component alpha, then we can say we can define it as image with the four component. Okay, so it is 32 bit. So sometimes, sometimes we use uh, we use x. X means that it is provided, but the x is not used. It is it is some kind of garbage. Maybe. It is possible to present the, the image with this 3 byte, but why we use 4 byte? Normally, our the computer is 32 bit or 64 bit computers, so in case of dealing with the 3 byte order, it is not efficient and it, it is not, it, it has very confusing because R, G, B, and in 32-bit computers, so they read another thing, so, so they should have to, to, to read two byte and one byte of previous word, and then then two byte of next word. We need, need to merge it into RGB color. That that it is very annoying job. So sometimes, even though we waste one byte, then we can write this, okay? So it is mu much more efficient way to implement RGB color. So sometimes we use RGBX, okay? So, so in WebGL, the image, if we want to use image to text for text mapping, so we, th this kind of two-dimensional memory must be, must be so declared, and then the text, the image must be stored in this the buffer memory first okay and then and then we have the texture information for example the, of course it is possible to use it use rgb the, normally it is used for rgba but the of course it is possible to use rgb for object color but sometimes you can use it for reflection. For example, the, this outside part is somewhat kind of a text image. If we have image of this outside area, then if we modeling T part, then you can get some reflected image on the surface of T part. Then, then, then we can see some really more, more we can get some more realistic the shiny object with reflection. It is possible to get this result by texture mapping. We sometimes we call it reflection map or reflection mapping. Okay. Sometimes we can use it with texture to depth or stencil. We can write that texture to depth buffer or stencil buffer, then you can use use for depth mapping or stencil mapping. Sometimes, sometimes it is very special purpose of uh, uh, the texture mapping is displacement mapping. Displacement ma ma mapping is used for the, uh, for example, in case of four, for example, do you remember that some, some animation movies, monster, monster incorporation or something so in that case there that that character has a very he so yeah there are so many hairs so to the hair modeling is uh, we have more than 100,000 the hairs it is not possible to modeling each hair to in computer graphics so in that case we can use the, the displace mapping for express four and sometimes we use some bumper mapping. Bumper mapping is we can we can change the normal vector of a surface by using like this. If just to change the color of that, then sometimes it is not not realistic. But if we add some kind of noise texture in in surface, then we twist some normal vector of the surface, then you can get this kind of model. Think about it. 
if, if we modeling this shape with the vertex by vertex position, it's not, actually it's not possible. Think about it, who can do it? Okay, it is not possible. But with bump mapping, we can get easily, we can get this, this effect by, by programming, okay? Then, let's go to text mapping. I said that the, the, this technique, we call it is te texture mapping. Mapping means, so, if, if the, there is image with the, in UV space, the image UV coordinate look like this. So, image is, so, is kind of a rectangle, and then origin is in here, and then it is 1.1 and and this image this image should be mapped onto geometric object so oh you can see that this this shape is somewhat surface is curved but we think that in webgl we just only use the triangle or point or line, then it is not possible to draw these things. So we can think that there are very smallly divided triangles, okay? We can express this shape, okay? Like this. There are so many tiny triangles is subdivided in the, 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 the surface is divided into very tiny triangles. Then we can say that it is repeated. This image is repeated, so this point is in here, this point in here, this point in here, this point in here. We need to assign some kind of a, kind of a, this vertex should have, should have information of you, the texture. So, for example, if this vertex has X, Y, Z coordinate, for example, there is some kind of RGB attributes. And then they should have texture information. Oh, my vertex point is in here, so UV is 0 0.4, 0 0.6. That, that kind of information should be added to vertex attributes. So then, yeah, it is, it is mapping. Then you can get this result. Okay. So there is some kind of so the another coordinate system should be added texture space, okay? There is some kind of object space. Object space is defined with vertex coordinate of object. And then it is changed in screen coordinate. I said that uh, the changing screen, screen coordinate is by primitive assembly stage. They, they after vertex shader, then they X, Y, Z will be divided into W. Then we can get screen coordinate then in screen coordinate there is a, some kind of a pixel position is in here okay then the that with the uv coordinate value and then the the the, the, the vertex position and then you with the vertex position and uv coordinate you can going back to here oh yeah the in this pixel is this pixel, then you can draw this fight color or this fight color. It works like this. Okay, but yeah, idea is very simple. Okay, so map image onto the surface. But you know that, so the, there is X, Y, Z, the vertex coordinate and UV coordinate. So, and and some coordinate system must be involved, and and it is not easy. So, first we need to think about the coordinate system. First thing is texture coordinate. Texture coordinate is transformed into pixel coordinate of image. Normally we say that if if there is an image, oh, there is an image, then okay. Normally we say that oh yeah, this image is a six hundred forty pixel. 320 pixel, each pixel has RGBA, and then the, the start point is here, 0, 0, 
And then the end point is here. So 640 by point, 3 point, 320. So it should be changed into texture coordinate. Text coordinate in WebGL or OpenGL, it should be changed into, normalized into 0 0.0 to 1.1. Okay. 1,1. 1. So then text coordinate use this normalized coordinate and then object coordinate. Object has their only their the vertex position. Okay. So and each vertex has the map uh, mapping UV coordinate. Okay. In each vertex must have it. And then window coordinate. Then after the vertex shader, then it changed into vertex position is changed into the the screen coordinate and then it 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 also changed into the the, the with the uv coordinate it should be changed into the pixel position in image so so is in forward mapping so image is mapped into object and then in screen you can see this result but in actually in actually so we calculate the pic, we, the pixel position then rasterize rasterization and then in fragment shader we need to decide the color of pixel in fragment shader so in fragment shader we need to decide color. They they decide to use texture, so it must go back to backward mapping. Then it must go to here. But sometimes, if we scale down and rotate and something, so the power point of of a pixel must it, by backward mapping that it, it will be located in here and here and here and here. So. It is not one point, it is n pixel area. So how can you choose the color? Okay, how can you choose the color? Okay. So there is a, it is the same as some kind of anti alias problem. Okay, so we can choose the center point. Center point is going to here. Then we can choose this color. Then we map this color. Then, if we use this this scheme, then aliasing will be occurred in rendering result. Okay, I will explain later. Okay. In case of uh, mapping, mapping means that we will give give the UV coordinate to vertex. Okay. So how can you give that UV value to? How can you decide the UV value? First thing, so we can, we can, so the, the simple, we, we can mapping with using the shape is the cylinder, shape is cylinder, then we can use very simple equation, then you will, uh, mathematical equation, then you, then you can, we can mapping with this thing. For example, you see that's uh, my face example. That is cylindrical mapping. So X, Y, Z will be the change into UV like this. So it, it is very easy. And then image coordinate will be, for example, my face is like this. Then I divide, divide it into, the, if there is a, some kind of center line, then there will, we draw very, virtual cylinder, then we can, from the center line, we should lay to, to each vertex, then we can get UV value. It is kind of a cylindrical mapping, okay? So we can, we can calculate UV by this equation. Another way is we can, we, we can use the the spherical mapping is if we can assume that if I my face is like this, uh, 
then we can draw so in center of some in in center of, of geometric shape we can shoot something some ray to outside of outside from origin of sphere then we can shoot the ray direction of the sphere surface then this the ray will meet some place then we, we, we can use this uh, rotation angle, pi and set, pi and theta to decide to UV coordinate. Then the image should be like this kind of shape. So it is UV coordinate, the spherical mapping image. So it is wi widely used in the VR or AR application or 36 degree view. So this image is can be displayed in spherical and then we can go inside of this position then with texture mapping then we can we can see the 36 degree of camera view is possible sometimes we call it it is the, the environmental mapping okay or spherical mapping okay so so spherical mapping is widely used in environmental mapping okay the equation is like this so if you wanted the spherical mapping then you can choose with x y z you can use the, 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 this equation you can you can decide the uv coordinate by the position x y z okay then the, the another way is the we will assume that some kind of a box okay so we draw some we can assume that some box then the, if there is a, some complex shape then we can if but uh, vertex position in here then center of a cube then we we'll shot shoot the ray then that ray is touching this image touching this plane then we can calculate calculate uv coordinate over here so if position vertex position is in here then if you shoot the ray in cent from center of a cube then it will touch this up touch this point okay this point then we can use uv of this this plane and then mapping with this image so that is box mapping box mapping is supported by the webgl so WebGL can use box mapping, so we can assign six images, and then we can use box mapping. Okay. That we call it. It is a second mapping. So we assume that some some intermediate object, for example, cylinder, or spear, spear or box, then we can mapping into actual object with ray shooting or something projection. Okay. That is possible. We can we can we call it as a second mapping. Okay. So aliasing. For example, we draw something so some three pixels. Then the 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 three pixel. In that case, the all three point go to here. But the the image was the blue stripe in. Blue stripe and white stripe is alternatively distributed, but unfortunately, the the, the calculation only touched the white place, so all pixels will be white. Yes, that is aliasing. So, so to reduce to reduce aliasing, so we need what? Yes, anti-aliasing is needed. Aliasing is required to solve this problem. Okay, the problem is actually the rendering is done by the the, the that is that is board mapping. The actual rendering is done by the backward mapping. So, backward mapping means that. 
if we in screen coordinate we decide it in we going back to the image position then image position will be some kind of some area then first we can think that so we calculate all area then we can sum 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 it or averaging the the pixels and then we set the pixel or color of this thing it's very similar to to N, in anti-aliasing i explained some the, the, if pixel is touching the triangle is touching this pixel then we can calculate this area then we can use this the, the coverage value to uh, as a, some kind of a the, the, up, the transparency then we can get some kind of transparency effect then we can get some anti-aliasing effect so but it is very sim similar to the coverage calculation in area coverage calculation in anti-aliasing geometric anti-aliasing special and but it is not easy so we can think that we can think that like this in in multi-sampling msaa then we can think that we send this a multiple sample then it goes to multiple position then we can get multiple position then we can average it so with that we can get much more um, uh, precise and anti-aliased image we can get okay so so multi sampling is the, the so quite widely used for 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 texture mapping anti-aliasing but sometimes of course multi the so anti-aliasing is anti-aliasing makes some the performance is low so performance and quality of rendering by anti-aliasing is has trade-off between quality and performance so if we use multi-sampling in texture mapping then the texture mapping performance will be dropped will be dropped and then pop, the quality will be going up but but performance will be dropped so if we turn up multi-sampling on texture mapping then the quality will be dropped then but the performance will be going up so we need to use it very carefully okay and the another thing is that if the if for example this this surface is we are drawing to 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 texture mapping with texture mapping if camera is going far from this object this surface will be displayed in very small part okay very small part then this pixel will be less, maybe less than one pixel or something so but it going to here then it the in surface area the, the, it will make some this pixel 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 areas look like this in that case in that case it is some sampling or averaging is quite useless for for this case for example this the, the black image has a size of 128 by 128 then if this the surface the pixel is just the four pixel by four pixel so we don't need the 120 by the 128 size image at all so sometimes we make some like this for example 128 and then average it and then 64 by 64 32 by 32 and 16 by 16 and 8 by 8 8 by 8 and 4 by 4 2 by 2. okay we we so before using this texture image we generate this kind of uh, averaging image in advance to rendering the texture make the object then we can if the the object is going far from camera camera then we can use this thing we can we can choose we can choose this thing and then if we going to this object going near the camera then we can use this one 
or this one. Then we, we say that it is level, level of detail. So we in short the, the L O T level of detail. Okay? Level of detail. Level of detail. So and then and we make this the hierarchy it looks like a hierarchical pyramid shape of image. And we call it it is MIP map. So MIMAP is possible to use it as a WebGL and OpenJS too. Okay. And, and 3D texture. Oh. If, if texture mapping in, in 3D shape, sometimes it is not easy to, to express 3D precisely. For example, if mapping in here, mapping the, the, this flower image in onto the, the surface of the teapot, then you can get this, this result. But the problem is, if it is mapped onto this area, then this white color will be used for that. And sometimes, sometimes we need to get some this kind of, for example, this kind of a, some kind of stone texture with 3D texture, then we can get it is it is carved into the 3D the, the stone, the marble or the granite or something. That is carved. The model is carved, but carved from this stone. That kind of effect can be made with 3D texture. But unfortunately, the the WebGL one does not support 3D texture. But in case of WebGL 2, it is it is possible to use use very it is not not you cannot I cannot say it, it is exactly 3D texture, but it, we can get the similar to we can get similar to 3D texture effect, we can get the, the, the 3D data some some you can define the some some multiple texture for we can get some very similar to 3D texture, okay? So that is uh, that is I explained the something in in some theoretical theory of uh, texture mapping, okay? Then next part I will teach you uh, the how to programming it in when using WebGL, okay? Before that, let's go to pipeline. Okay, there is a texture memory. I will change the color pen. There is a texture memory in here. So we did not discuss about it. So API connected to texture memory. It means that we can send some image in CPU memory, then we can send it to GPU memory, texture memory. Okay, which like like vertex buffer object, if we vertex data is stored in CPU, it's, it must be sent to GPU, like that, like this. The texture image should go to texture memory. Texture memory is used for as input of a fragment shader. So, so we, if we want to use texture, then we use change the fragment shader code. Okay? So fragment shader code should be changed to use texture memory. Okay? Okay, let's go to part two B. Let's practice.